Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. Now that my two obligatory informative videos are done for the day, it's time to talk about current events in the online fitness community. And for those of you who don't like these videos, you saw the title of the video when you clicked on it. You got workout videos, informative content, everything else before this. Go watch that instead. But for those of you who stay tuned only for these videos, uh, let's talk about Jeff Cavalier again. So let me put on my plus five hat of weaponsmithing, work on skilling up my crafting a little bit, and let's talk about this. Now, for the fanboys that are going to come in here, they're going to throw insults. Well, you guys need to understand, stop putting YouTubers on a pedestal. Everyone is capable of making mistakes. I don't care how intelligent you are, how educated you are. We all make mistakes. We all, all of us who are on YouTube at some point say really stupid shit, myself included. I, I am guilty of it. I've been fairly criticized for doing it myself. You know what? You have to be able to accept that criticism when it really is legitimate. And that includes my fans. That includes Jeff's fans. Uh, Jeff said some really stupid shit in this last video. Uh, and it's actually the way that he conducted this last video is beneath a man of his intelligence. It's actually beneath his intelligence. Uh, and it was just flat out excuses for Jesse's weakness. Uh, and that's the scary part. I'm, I actually expect more from Jeff. I actually expect more from Jeff. Um, instead of him just admitting that, look, you know, maybe Jesse was lazy. Maybe Jesse uh, jerked off in the gym and hopped around playing leap frog and, frog and grab ass and did fluff and pump. That's the reason Jesse is still tiny and he's weak and he probably didn't eat enough. Right, he didn't just come out and say, okay, maybe I shouldn't have used him as the best example of the results of my people because I have plenty of pro athletes to get better results. Maybe he should have done that. Instead, he made excuses about compensatory strength. That Jesse really isn't weak. He's strong. And he talked about compensatory strength versus true strength. And here's the thing. Um, he didn't talk about bad form because he said, no, I'm not talking about bad form. I'm talking about athletes who are masters of compensatory uh, movement. And he's right because athletes, professional elite athletes tend to be masters of that. They are amazing at compensating. They're gifted at compensating to find ideal leverages and move and do whatever they can as efficiently as possible uh, working around their imbalances on a playing field or whatever else. That, that's true. That is true. He's right. The problem is to use that as an excuse to not get people stronger, to claim that people aren't as strong as they seem to be. Uh, you know, because again, well, you know, I mean, Jesse might seem weak with his 300 deadlift, but, you know, we've, we've trained him to be balanced. And, you know, uh, just because he only deadlifts 300, maybe if we put some of you guys who do 500 for work sets and reps or more all the time, that really your compensatory strength is the only reason you're stronger. So you've got one hip and hamstring and glute that's stronger than the other, and you're just using it to lift more weight. But if we were to take like a Nordic hamstring measurement machine, and we were to test your weakest hamstring, see so your weakest hamstring might not be any stronger than Jesse's. So technically, technically, you're not as strong as you think you are, but, you, but Jesse is, is really as strong as you guys. I mean, the, the sort of just excuses almost that it seemed like he was making as if people aren't extremely, truly strong because they have <laughs> unilateral imbalances and as if that automatically leads to injuries. Again, this is like when you hear people, well, I'm just going to call it, let's call it like it is. You guys ever heard Mark Ripto say the term, there are physical therapists masquerading as strength and conditioning coaches? All right, this is kind of the example of what we're talking about. In what world can you not safely load someone just because they have a mild strength imbalance? Just because a person has one quad or one hip stronger than the other, as long as you can keep the barbell and the bar path relatively even, in what world does that really lead to injury? Are we serious? There are thousands of elite lifters who squat 600, deadlift 700, who, when they have measured this stuff, have strength imbalances unilateral. Sometimes they choose to work on them. Sometimes they don't. I mean, use Greg Knuckles, perfect example. Greg Knuckles has well in excess of a decade of being an elite level lifter. He's not getting hurt because of the strength imbalance. This guy who's, you know, squats like 700 pounds. Raw. Drug tested. 
he did some of this one-legged stuff and found out he has one leg. He can, like, one-legged deadlift a lot more than the other. He's got a strength imbalance there. Did that mean that he got hurt? Does that mean that he isn't strong? Are we serious? Are we serious? The level of bullshit, the level of bullshit that he threw out just to hide the fact that Jesse's a lazy weak pussy who's not willing to actually work, I don't know. I mean, I'm not even trying to be a dick there. Maybe, maybe I'm being too much of a dick. Maybe Jesse isn't. But the, the whole point there is that there is literally no excuse for a young man being in the gym, training under a legitimate strength and conditioning coach, taking tips from a legitimate strength and conditioning coach, uh, who claims that they want to get stronger, who claims that they're trying to gain muscle, that they're trying to gain explosiveness, athleticism, to still be that weak. That's totally unacceptable. Um, and I mean, I guess the, the best situation should have been for Jeff not to use him as an example because he said he did it right. He didn't. He doesn't have any strength. I mean, I'm sorry, but a 300 deadlift for a young man in his 20s who's been lifting and actually doing compound movements for over a year to have a 300 pound deadlift is absolutely unacceptable. Uh, and a lot of people are going to get hurt by this. They're going to be like, well, that's all. Well, I'm sorry. But, but you don't know how to train if that's where you are. You didn't train right. Uh, I mean, truth be told, let's just be brutally honest. Let's be brutally honest. Someone who comes in and does one heavy set of deadlifts one day a week. That's it. You don't even need training volume. If a guy is also doing squats and leg movements and any other back movements, a guy who comes in and does one set of deadlifts, say on Monday or Friday and never does another one through the rest of the week, just one work set and they just progressively overload. I don't know, a three rep set, a five rep set with minimal programming. They should be considerably stronger than him well before the end of the first year. Uh, and compensatory strength or not. And when we start talking about strength imbalances, strength imbalances don't exist when you're weak. I mean, we want to talk about weak points and everything else for people who are underdeveloped and weak. You don't need to work on that. You need to make them stronger because here's the thing. Yes, a person may have a unilateral strength imbalance. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Most of us do. Most of us do. That's normal. And yes, you might compensate for that to some extent on an exercise. But that doesn't mean you don't get stronger. That doesn't mean the weaker side doesn't get stronger also. Because oftentimes, someone who has a unilateral imbalance, when you start loading them, guess what happens? When you're on a structured, balanced strength training program, oftentimes, those strength imbalances get smaller. They don't get larger, they might be compensating, but if you adjust their technique, if you adjust their technique a little bit, oftentimes those discrepancies can get smaller, meaning they might still be there, but it's going to shift because the weak side also is getting stronger and getting trained. People need to understand that. The weak side is also getting trained. And yes, the stronger side might be getting 5% more stimulation because of the tension. But growth and strength are oftentimes systematic as well. What have we seen from studies? That when someone's in a cast, or we take a novice lifter and they do purely unilateral training, what happens? Does the untrained side gain muscle? Yeah. Does the untrained side gain strength? Yeah, just not as fast as the other side. So some of the additional training load is going to carry over. And as you tighten up their form over time, when you get them with just a workable form, it doesn't need to be perfect. Those imbalances tend to be corrected slightly over time. I'm not saying they're going to completely disappear without specialized work, but they tend to improve. And very rarely are they a real problem. In other words, an athlete out on a playing field who has a quad that's 10% stronger than the other one, the likelihood that that's going to lead to an injury you're not going to notice that because when you're on a playing field, you tend to favor stronger sides anyways. Um, uh, sorry, that, that's, that's not a real concern. Again, this is physical therapist 
in physical therapy mindset and masquerading as strength and conditioning coaches. Uh, that's just not a real concern. And I'm not saying we shouldn't try to, but we can correct those imbalances. Furthermore, there's nothing that stops someone from working on that as they go. Let's say you have an athlete already and you find out they have a unilateral strength imbalance that you want to correct. You can still keep progressively loading them on the exercises. You can still keep training them. You don't have to do corrective exercises at the expense of the progression. You can work on the stuff otherwise. In other words, let's say you have an athlete who <laughs> has a left hamstring 20% weaker than your right. Do you have them stop power cleaning and stop deadlifting? Do you have them stop squatting because of that? No, you can keep progressing. And if you might need to do a corrective exercise, fine. If you want to do a corrective exercise afterwards to just strengthen the weak side after the other main lifts, that still has a stimulating effect. You don't have to neglect their progress to fix that and the whole other bullshit well you're not really that strong I'm sorry but someone who squats 500 pounds is stronger than someone who squats 400 pounds or 300 pounds if they're using the same range of motion they're both squatting to parallel or they're both squatting to two inches below parallel or whatever standard you're setting if they are squatting more weight it doesn't matter if they have a slightly more compensatory strength. They are stronger than the other guy. You put them in a powerlifting meet, they're going to squat more. You put them on a playing field, a football field, and you have them hit someone else. You have the 500-pound the squatter hit the 300-pound squatter head on, and you see which one gets knocked on, knocked on their ass. Oh, no, the, the stronger squatter might have a slight larger unilateral strength imbalance, he's still going to knock you on your ass on the playing field. He's still going to kick you harder in an MMA match. And what world does that mean that they aren't strong? That's reality. If you squat 500 pounds, you are stronger than someone who squats 300 pounds. All right? There is no argument you have against that. I mean, you talk about sheer idiocracy. Again, this is why I expect more from Jeff. I expect more from Jeff. He's a smart guy. He's got education. He's got experience. Uh, he's intelligent. He's well-spoken. I expect more from him than to say some stupid bullshit like that. Absolutely below his level of intelligence. And it makes me wonder what message he's trying to put out to his people. That if he really thinks that he can use mumbo jumbo like that to talk down to people and convince people that, well, a stronger person isn't really stronger because they, they compensate. Maybe they use their stronger side to help them lift an extra 300 pounds. It would be different if we're talking about their changing range of motion to get better leverage. It's okay, fine. But when you're talking about real full movements, I'm sorry, but a barbell squat is a good proxy for overall strength. A deadlift is a good proxy for overall uh, full body strength. If you squat and deadlift more than someone else, you are stronger than them, irrespective of the imbalances. And a guy and a grown man who deadlifts 300 pounds is not strong by any measure. That is a weak man for someone who is trained. Now, if that's someone who's never worked out, you could say they're strong for an untrained person. Yeah, I mean, if you come in and deadlift 300 your first time ever, for someone who's never trained, you're really strong. But being strong for being someone who's really trained, it doesn't mean anything. You're still going to get your ass handed to you on any playing field or any competitive environment where strength or power matter by the guy who's stronger than you. It doesn't matter. You know, again, these guys, man, I think I, I made really good progress in my first six months. Yeah, you probably did, but that still doesn't mean you're not weak. <laughs> But in his case, he didn't make good progress. He made horrifically bad progress. Like, I've never seen anyone run a proper strength training program as a healthy man ending up as weak as he has at 14 months. I've just never seen it. I've never seen it firsthand. 
Uh, and again, people will say, well, you know, he was training to be athletic. Okay, but being stronger helps you be more athletic. I mean, you get strong on the squat, you get strong on the push press, you get strong on the power clean. That's going to help you on virtually every sport. You're going to be more athletic. You're going to be more explosive. You're going to be stronger. You're going to hit harder. You're going to be able to run faster, jump higher. And what world does, does uh, <laughs> do people not understand that? You'd be surprised when you go look at Olympic level sprinters, how much some of them squat. There are Olympic level sprinters out there who are under 200 pounds who can squat five, 600 pounds. Why do you think that is? Because they're strong. Being strong is a benefit to your athleticism. And he's not strong. He hasn't been trained like an athlete. All right, guys, but well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.